Yes, it's me. This is a very special edition podcast, Trump the Border. And it's not that you need to hear what I have to say. It's just that I've got an opportunity to say something because everybody is in this big uproar. And so I'm going to say a few things. Now, this is going to be full of the usual candidness. Ah, let's see. Okay. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is from Hawaii. I know that that's what you're asking, but Jesse, this is about New York. All right. Bear with me. Now, Obama is from three places. Many of us are from more than one place. Obama is from three places. You need to know this. He's from Kenya. He's from Chicago and he's from Hawaii in no particular order. Well, uh, technically, I was looking at a map from, you know, he's going right to left going. So he's okay, left to right. Like we know, he's from Hawaii, Chicago and Kenya. There we go, George. Thank you. All right. Everyone wants the left to be first. We have the left first. Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is from one of the places that Obama is from, Hawaii. She's a congresswoman, which makes her a politician, for those of you in Reed Rapids. And politicians kind of think alike. They get in their little capital district and they have similar thinking. Now, she went to Syria on a secret mission, a fact-finding tour, or I don't know what she called it, but she was looking for information. She wanted to know what was going on in Syria. So she went to Syria. She met with Assad. And she had a very interesting interview with CNN. I mean, it was, and, and what, what I, I like what she said. She's a Democrat. I typically don't like Democrats, but, well, politicians, okay, it, you know. She said, well, Assad, like him or not, he was elected by the people of Syria. He's their president. And so what we do, whether it's right or wrong, has to go through him. So uh, she said, I'm not going to question on whether he's good or bad. He's the president. That's, that's the truth of the matter. And that's a very mature statement right there. If, if, Anyone who can say, all right, truth of the matter is X, Y, Z, and that's what we got to live with and then move forward. If you can do that, that's, you know, that's powerful. Take it from a Democrat, uh, Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard. Now, she says to CNN, she's got evidence or whatever that Obama supposedly funded ISIS. I don't know what, I I, I don't know what to make of that. I mean, if, see, if Obama was funding ISIS, that, that's an accusation of treason. No president is above treason. Is that really what she's saying? I, I, you know, I mean, she says that that the groups that are being funded or something or other are ISIS. I don't know if it's direct or indirect. I don't know. I, I, I don't know the detail. I don't know what she saw. But I, I can't believe that a congressman or a woman, whatever. I can't believe that a member of Congress would just say, oh, the, the president was funding ISIS. There's got to be at least something more to this. Because if it's true. It, like, it was just Obama. Nobody else was involved. He was the only one doing it. That would... That's an accusation of treason. Uh, and I don't see it being treated that way. So there, there's got... So when I say this, referring to what she said to CNN, don't... Don't... Don't jump overboard and, and, and go to the microwaves here. Um, but that is pretty serious. You know, maybe CIA has something that's going on over there and Obama's in charge. So we say that it's Obama instead of CIA. Or maybe we don't know what CIA is doing or, you know, I, maybe CIA doesn't know what CIA is doing, which, but I just, you know, the, 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 the massive contradiction of all time, military intelligence, but CIA isn't military. But so here we've got this situation, a congresswoman, a Democrat, she's, she's got Obama's job, Congress or politician. Okay, Congress president. She's a politician, same career, same state, same political party, 
says that he's funding ISIS. That's what we've got. Now, funding ISIS in quotes, okay? Who knows what it means? Now, we've got another lady, Judge Am, Ann M. Donnelly. She's the federal judge, okay? She's the federal judge here. Now, for those of you in Reader Rapids who don't know what's going on with the federal judge, on Friday, Trump takes out his pen, smiles for the camera, brilliant marketing thing to do, something Obama did not do. Obama did executive orders all the time. He didn't smile for the camera. Like, I mean, maybe if Obama had smiled for the camera more, Obama supporters would have seen what he was doing more and Hillary might have been able to get elected. So Obama's got this marketing thing where he goes in there, calls on the people, smiles for the camera, has the routine. You know, Reince over there has the uh, you know, prebus. Reince has the, the big folder of the order. Oh, you know, Trump pulls out his pen, smiles, takes it, holds it up, smiles for the camera, goes back down. And it's this big, it's this photo op thing. I mean, they're in the oval orifice and all that. And it, this is how Trump does it. So he signs this. I mean, every executive order is a photo op for Trump. Brilliant marketing. Not every president does that. If Obama had done that half as much, people would be more aware of how much Obama used executive orders. This is Trump is not using executive orders or, more than Obama did. Trump is marketing them more than Obama marketed them. And, and, and all the people who are susceptible to marketing are in it. Oh, it, he's marketing. No, 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 it, 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 you know. So Trump is marketing his executive orders. He signs an executive order. Great marketing. And I'm not going to go into the details of what the order was. You need to go over to Pacific Daily Times and listen to the Encore editorial for today. and Read all about it. There are tons of links this week. I've got, I've got so much news. I could, I could do three, four, five editorial blogs just based on the news last week. It's hard keeping up with all of it, but I've got it all. All the big major headlines from all last week are in one post over at PacificDailyTimes.com. <sighs> Trump's order only lists one country, Syria, because lots of Syrian refugees destroyed Europe. He doesn't want he's a, Syrian refugees destroy things. We don't want people who destroy things. You know, if they'd gone in and not destroyed things, he probably would accept them. So now all the good Syrian refugees didn't stop the bad apples. So the good ones stood there with their hands in their pockets and let the bad ones destroy the country. I don't, I don't know. I don't know how, how it worked. Maybe not. Trump doesn't want, he looks, he's looking at Trump. What is Trump going to do? He's looking over at Europe. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to go in this podcast to defend Trump or attack anyone. I, this is the, if I could boil this down to you, what I'm going to say in the podcast here, this this very special edition podcast, Trump the Border, my point to you is this. What in the world is anyone to think? What, 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 what are any of us to think of this? What are the Democrats to think? What are the Republicans to think? What's Trump to think? What's Assad to think? What's, what's Obama to think? Congresswoman from his own party and state comes back and says that he's funding ISIS? What's Obama to spo- what's he supposed to think about that? What's what's CIA supposed to think about that? What's what's the FBI supposed to think about a congresswoman accusing a former president of what I understand? If you pound out the definition and boil it down, it's treason. Without saying it's tre- what bad choice of words. What? What's anyone to think about any of this? So t- Trump's over here. He sees a whole bunch of Syrian refugees, all military, military men. Military a man age. Quote unquote refugees. I thought that men who qualify for the military get drafted by their government or volunteer to overthrow their, their, their bad government. Like, like, you know, there were resistors somewhere in, in, in Nazi Germany the American Revolution. I thought that military men stand up and defend their country. That's, I mean, American men have to register for the draft. These are draft candidate, quote unquote, refugees. Are we supposed, is Trump supposed to believe that? 
soldier class, soldier type of people are refugees running through Europe and they're destroying the place. And it, what, what is, what is he, what is he supposed to think? So he lists one country. He says, until further notice, we're going to, we're, we're, you know, we are figuring out what's going on here. Not forever, not permanently. It's just an executive order. Those can't, those, executive orders can be very easily overturned by Congress. That, that's what, Trump is overturning Obama's stuff, what Obama has done. Because executive orders are that easy to overturn. That, that's the thing. If you were an Obama supporter, Obama did you no favors at all. Because everything that he did was all a house of cards. He didn't, he didn't take the time to go through Congress and build stuff that lasts. He just did it with the pen, which means it can be undone with an eraser. Because ink can erase, you know. So, what's Trump to think about all this? So he says, no one in Syria can come into the States until we can figure out what's going on. The other six of these seven countries, Trump didn't list those in his order. Those countries were defined by DHS under Obama. Obama was the one that made that seven country list. Go look, it's going to be linked at the Times. Go there. January 30, 2017, Encore of Revival. Go look at it. Look in the links. Up towards the top of the links is there's the actual text. Only Syria shows up in it. The other countries don't because that seven country list was created under Obama. Now, his order does say that the United States will accept refugees if there's come if they're escaping religious persecution and they are a member of a minority religion in that country. So let's say if you had a whole bunch of Christians controlling a country, like it was a Christian nation, 80% Christian, and and they wanted to to to, to burn uh, some uh, uh, Sikhs alive. A Sikh could come to the country and say, I'm a Sikh, a minority in a registered Christian country. There are registered Christian countries, I do believe. You could come in, uh, England might be one, I suppose, the queen is the head of the church. You could say, I'm, I'm, I'm running from religious persecution. I'm a Sikh, I'm a minority in a country uh, that's 80% Christian and they want to burn me alive. Okay, all right, you can come in. And they would let him come in. Only Syria is the country where they're not doing that for now. Now, um, and, and again, that's after military age people said that they were refugees, not old women and young children. These are military age men who say they were refugees, went into Europe and destroyed Europe. Trump says, okay, uh, no more of these quote unquote refugees from uh, Syria until we figure out what's going on now. All right. So a federal judge, one of Obama's judges, Ann M. Donnelly, says, okay, people were coming here from these countries. They got on the plane before he signed or just after he signed and hadn't hit news or whatever. He signed on Friday. They arrived on Friday or, you know, Saturday. Atlantic is long ocean to cross. Not as long as some. You can't just... T- they had papers saying that they were already approved to come to the States. We can't just up and send them back. That was that was it. She didn't say... She didn't, she, she didn't say much. That was it. Okay. that That's probably reasonable. That sounds reasonable to me. But... Border agents, lawyers are coming up to border agents with this executive order saying, I demand to speak to my client. Now, um, the order says that they can't be sent back to their country if they have papers already approved to arrive. And lawyers are grabbing this, going and saying, I'm a lawyer, I demand to talk to my client. 
That's another story. The order doesn't say that lawyers can go talk to the clients. Not as far as I understand. So lawyers are taking what I understand to be an unrelated law, uh, unrelated ruling, excuse me, and demanding to talk to people they say are clients. Now, there's a few problems with this. See, I live over here in Asia because I think America needs to understand other countries. Hello. I, I, I knew long ago that we would get business people in politics and that after that we'd need to have expats in politics. People who were Americans who grew up in America but have spent a good number of years, not, not only two or five, a good number of years in other countries to understand what in the world goes on in other countries so we can fix our own immigration laws. I deal with immigration all the time because I'm in other countries all the time. It's exhausting. It's a learning curve. You probably don't know your own immigration process. I have people in other countries tell me all about America's immigration process, including the question, are you an alien with special powers or something? I, I, mean, I believe that's a question. Like, like, can you, can you move metal? Are you magneto? I think that's a question on the interview. So, yeah, I mean, it's amazing what goes on in immigration. So I'm over here and I understand something. When I was in Malaysia, I go to the border. Malaysia is a Muslim country. It was a very welcoming, happy, wonderful, happy country. I talked to Muslims there who were very, very friendly people. I, when I was in Chicago, going to school, Muslims are incredibly friendly people. But I understand when I'm in another country, I'm there at the pleasure of that country. I'm a guest. Every country has young military age men like the quote unquote Syrian refugees who went up and trashed Europe. Young men in that class who fight and die to keep that country that country. Every country has this. And some of those young men stick around after they get old and they tell the new young men what to do. And they keep their country going. They keep the flag the same. They keep the borders the same. Now, I am in a... I, I was. I'm getting old now. I was in a class of young men like that in America. And I had to register for the draft in my country, the United States. I'm not in that class in other countries. Those aren't my countries. I don't fight and die for those other countries. I don't have the same special rights in those countries as other young men who fight and die for their country. My fight and die for country is the United States. That's where my rights are. Any place else, I'm a guest. Now, that doesn't mean I don't have human rights. I got human rights anywhere. Driving? I don't know if you know this or not. My father was a driver's ed instructor. He always told me since I was a kid. Driving is not a right, it's a privilege. You do not have a right to drive a car down the road. It's a privilege. Voting is a right. Free speech is a right. Lying about people is not a right. Actually, you have a right to not be lied about. And when you're crossing a border... You have not crossed the border into that country where the rights exist yet. You're still in question. People aren't sure who you are. You're in the twilight zone. You're between. And when you're crossing a border, you are not in the country with rights. Even if you're an alien, even if I'm an alien in a country. Whatever rights I have, I only have after I cross the border. Once you cross the border, there's a right. But when you're, when you're, when you haven't crossed into that country yet, you're technically still in the custody of, of your own country. It's a change of custody that goes on. And if those people coming in off the plane have not come into the United States yet, they do not have a right to an attorney yet. 
Not not unless they're being charged with some other crime, but they do not have a right to an attorney to be able to enter the country. Immigration can say no to whoever the heck they want. You can get a visa. I, I don't know if you know this or not. Any visa can be canceled for no reason at any time. If a visa is not supposed to be canceled, that's an internal office decision. But the office can decide at any time. Government can decide to cancel any visa any time they jolly well want to. Because visas are given to people who are outside of the young men who fight and die for that country. This is for outsiders. Visas are welcoming hospitality. I do not have a right to park my bottom inside your house. I don't have a right. If I go into your house... I'm there at your pleasure, and you can tell me to leave any time you want. You can invite me over for dinner, and I get there at the last minute, all dressed up, brought my food, and you can say, I'm sorry, something came up. I'm a total rude, evil, bad scoundrel, but I've got to tell you to go. All right. I do not have a right to go into your house still. Country is a big house because people fight and die and pay for it. I don't think that it was Trump's goal to give people approval letters and to try to trick them so they can come over here because that would be bad press and he's the master of marketing. He knows how to get elected. How is he going to get elected if he tries to do something like that? He's got to at least make it look like he didn't and he's not going to do something like that. Trump doesn't want this. If you think that Trump wasn't going to get elected, you need to listen to me. You don't understand him. If you think that Trump wanted to give people permission to come over here so that he could deny it to them, and you're among those who didn't know he was going to get elected like I and Ann Coulter did, then you need to understand, maybe you don't understand Trump. Well, for sure you don't understand him. You didn't know that he was going to get elected like Ann Coulter and I did. Go check my Instagram. It's back in February 2016. I put up my map. Now, Here we've got lawyers coming in with an order from a federal judge saying that people are allowed to stay in the country. That federal judge was appointed by the same president who was accused by another politician from his same state and party of basically of funding ISIS, quote unquote, which is terrorism. So here we've got a president accused by his own folk of funding terrorism who appointed a judge saying that people from a recently terrorist blocked country are have to come in. And you're just you're just a little tiny border agent who was hired under that president. These border agents were not hired under Trump. More than likely, it's pretty fast hiring. He's, he's, they better not have been. They better have training longer than Trump's been in office if they're going to be a border agent stamping stuff. These are prop, more than likely Obama border agents, and they've just been given this order, and now they've they got... What are these... Bo- I mean, they could lose their jobs if they do something wrong. You know how politics are. This federal judge says that, and then another judge on top of that overrules that. And then you got politics, and then heads roll. What are these border agents to think? What What is anyone to think about this? What is anyone to think? What are Muslims to think? What's that border agent to think? think put, put yourself in the border agent's shoes for a minute. In someone comes from Syria, you've got orders to let in Anyone except from Syria, because quote unquote refugees who are military age men went up and destroyed Europe, and we want to figure out what happened there. But anyone else, including the other six of these seven countries that Obama listed, not Trump, someone comes in, they're a minority religion persecuted by the major religion in that terrorist state, they're allowed in, even if they're in one of the other six countries in Obama's list. Okay. Are you, are you um, in a minority religion being persecuted by the by a majority religion in your country? 
uh, and, and, and the person says that they're a Muslim who's being persecuted by Muslims who's running from Islam. What's, what's the border agent supposed to think? I mean, he, he really does have to ask if there are bad guys. There are drug runners and, you know, most people aren't bad guys, but what, what is that border agent supposed to think? You're a Muslim running from Muslims? Well, in America, we love our enemies. We pray for those who persecute us and we stay in our country and fight to defend it to the death. And you're saying that your country's got a problem and you're running away? We Americans don't do that. Am I supposed to believe you? You say that Muslims are trying to kill you, but you say that you're Muslim. Are, are you sure? Why? If Muslims are trying to kill you, why are you Muslim? I, I know that there's lots of answers, but what is the border agent supposed to think? What is anyone supposed to think? A Muslim comes over here. He's been raised to think that Islam is the only thing that there is, just like Americans are raised to think that Optimus Prime is the only thing that there is. Optimus Prime and Captain America are always awesome. Captain America will stand up against America if he has to. That's the ideal patriot. So just as much as Santa Claus is awesome, this Muslim has been raised to think that Muslims are wonderful, and like a Christian raised in Sunday morning who suddenly gets attacked by Sunday morning, this Muslim finds himself in, a, in an Islamic world where he's being attacked. He's having a crisis of faith. He doesn't know what he believes. He just knows that he better say that he's Muslim because since a child he's been raised that that's the only thing that's good. What's going on? He's not sure. He finally gets over to the States. And then he tells a border agent, I'm a Muslim running from Muslims. And the border agent looks at him and goes, a, a what? What's anybody to think? What's anybody to think? You know what? I've said my piece. I Listen, I like the honesty of this congresswoman. She did not come back claiming to have top secret certified evidence of something bad. She didn't claim that about Obama. She just said, from what I understood, the word on the street was people asking, why is Obama funding ISIS? That's what people on the street were asking her. Does that mean Obama's funding ISIS because of the word on the street? I don't, who knows? I don't, I don't want, as, as the queen said, nobody know, wants to know what's going on with MI6. But, you know, you know, there's stuff, I don't, I don't get into conspiracy theories because there's, there's, it just keep, it never stops. People high up see things that, that, that we don't. We might not know what to do, or we would understand any of our leaders if we saw what they see every day. If they are doing something evil, it's something that's beyond our ability to understand what that really is. If we knew so much as these leaders do, then why can't we just hurry up and get elected? Do we really think the system is that gamed? What about this massive Trump surprise? This Trump election proved that the system is not totally fake. It surprises us like something that's real. It's all the surprises of real life. I mean, right now, all the anti-Trumpists are looking at Trump's election, still shaking their heads, saying, what am I to think of this? What is anybody to think? This federal judge? I, I, I would have said the same thing. I mean, if, if they end up on planes going back, they might, they might get paid by the U.S. to come back again. What does Trump think about this? Did Trump personally order those individual border agents? No, he wouldn't do that. He's a boss. He orders stuff through people. And Trump hasn't had time to speak on this because it all happened so recently. We got to wait to see what happens on Monday. Trump is going to talk on Monday and he's going to say stuff on Monday. And then we're going to know what's really going on. Now, I learned about really what was going on. I mean, I, you learn about everything from someone. And I've been so busy trying to follow so many things because every time I update Drudge, I mean, something something is new. I learned about this situation 
from uh, the, the Edward Snowden feed. And Snowden on Twitter said that it doesn't matter what country you're in or who your leader is if he's ordering people to ignore judges. That's bad. All right. But we don't exactly know. I mean, these could just I mean, lawyers are always thirsty for a living. There's we got a surplus of lawyers are just hungry to get a little bit of money. So we don't. Democrats have lost, so they're looking for photo ops. Of course, Democrat politicians saw, ooh, protest. I mean, 40% of the country can't stand the president. Of course, there's a lot of riots. It's close to half of the country that's upset. That doesn't mean it's a majority. And by the way, Trump didn't even try in New York and California, so we can't, uh, we can't, and we've got, what, 800,000, Hillary's gone from 2.8 million down to 8 million with the vote fraud. At least that's what the counts are so far. So I just, well, reported numbers, numbers. So what is anyone to think? What are you to think? What am I to think? I think what we need to think is that we need to think. Now, I didn't go back and check uh, Snowden's Twitter feed because I don't stock Snowden on Twitter. <sighs> did, did Snowden go against Obama that way? With all the federal judges that Obama was bucking up against? Hmm. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what to think about Snowden. I don't know what to think. Now, if you're Muslim, and you're a good person, and there, there, there are bad apples in every, but there's bad Christians. I'm sure there's a bad Muslim somewhere. Most of the Muslims I've ever met have all been great people. If you're Muslim, then you know that jihad is not usually fought with guns. It's fought with friendship and words and conversations and ideas, fighting, quote unquote, for the truth, not necessarily taking up arms. You've been taught, especially if you're a Sunni, that that's what jihad is. Why are you running? Is, is the mess that if you're a Muslim who's running, is the mess that you're running from really so big that you really do have to run? Is it that bad? If it is, you know, it's, it's all right to ask if you've been fed a line. I, I had to ask if I was fed a, fed a line, you know, a, a, you know, a fishing line. I had to ask that question when I was, Dealing with the problem of Sunday morning. D do you need to leave institutionalized whatever? I don't know. You need to do some soul searching. If you're a peaceful Muslim and you're running from jihad in your own country, and I mean the, the social jihad, not, not weapons and guns and fighting, but but the quote unquote holy war of conversation persuading people of the truth peacefully. If you can't do that in your own country and you're a Muslim, you need to think about uh, what what you, it's okay to think. You have permission to think. If you're a Muslim and you're trying to get into the United States and you're from a country. That's Muslim. I mean, like the government says, it's a Muslim country. And you get to the border and you tell that border agent that you're a Muslim in the same religion as the country that's trying to kill you. The border agent is not going to believe you. You can tell him, well, I'm Sunni and they're Shiites. You can tell him that. But that border agent, I guarantee you, is going to say. Well, Christian denominations don't try to kill each other. We just slander each other and don't talk to each other and say all kinds of bad things about each other and get mean and angry. But our Christian denominations don't try to kill each other. Why are Muslims trying to kill Muslims? So, I don't know. I'm not going to give anybody border advice. I don't, I don't know how border agents think. But I do know how Americans think. They're not, they're not going to buy it. 
maybe you shouldn't either. Think, think about what's going on. If you're Muslim, your Quran makes it very clear that Allah hates his enemies. The United States is a country of the Bible that had the Bible in its early law. That had people who read the Bible, who, who, who created the, the basic laws, constitution, etc. of the country. The first settlers were Bible readers from England and Puritans. The, the different denominations of England came to America first. If you're Muslim, you need to know not all Americans are Christian. But love your enemies is in their blood. And Adonai, the Lord, the Christian God, does not hate his enemies because he's too far above them. They are so beneath the Lord, his enemies, that he doesn't have enemies. He has rebels. But he's so, he's so big and they're so small, he can't hate them. I mean, I mean, he can't, they can't hurt him. Can you hate a mosquito that's on the moon? He can't touch you. He's small. No, a local mosquito, I guess could annoy you, but no enemy can annoy God. He's too big. Not the Christian God. So if you're Muslim and, and you come over here with the book that says that your God hates his enemies and we've got this God who's so big that he's above his enemies and we love our enemies and our denominations don't attack each other, not, not physically with arms, you're going to have some explaining to do if you want people to understand you and you need to think about this stuff. You need to think about it. You need to just think about it. If you think it was going to be a cakewalk going into America with that different worldview, then someone fed you a line. It's not easy. It's not easy to come from one drastically different worldview and just go into another country and, 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 and just walk in and, and make things work. I've been living in Asia for eight years. And it's not been easy for me. And if you're going into my country, the United States, it's not going to be easy for you. Don't expect it to be. And all those Democrat politicians or Republicans, Lindsey graham for one, who knows what Paul Ryan thinks one minute to the next, depends on which campaign he's running for. Whatever, whatever politicians told you that as a Muslim, it was going to be easy to get into America. They th remember politicians will say anything. Don't buy it. What's anybody to think? Maybe if we stop telling each other what to think, tell other people to think, say, think about this. I, I haven't told anybody what to think. I haven't, I haven't told any Muslims what to think. I haven't told any Muslims they're right or wrong. Now, I'll, I'll tell Christians they're wrong. I kind of implied it in my critique there. But we all need to ask ourselves, what are we to think? What are other people to think? What do you expect that refugee coming in who's being turned away, who's got his approved papers? What is he to think? I mean, most contracts have grandfather clauses. He's already received papers saying he can come over. Why are border agents turning him away? What is Donald? Donald Trump might be upset with those border agents. He loves to fire people. What, what's, what, what's anybody to think? What's anybody to think? So, go protest, but make it peaceful. You have a right to protest peacefully. You do not have a right to smash things. And whoever can come across as more sensible and more thinking and reasoning is going to get a lot more ears. And right now, we need a lot of people to have ears. And that is this very special edition podcast, Trump the Border. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.